بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمن ویلکم پاکستان بیک ٹو دا ماڈیول آن کارپوریٹ گورننس وی آر ٹریورسنگ اے لانگ جرنی ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اے ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ کانسیپٹ آف کارپوریٹ گورننس آف کارپوریٹ انسٹیٹیوشنز اینڈ آف دا گلوبل اکانومی ناؤ ڈیز لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمن جسٹ لائک وی مینشنڈ ان دا فرسٹ ماڈیول اینڈ آر فرسٹ سیشن دیٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس از دا ویری ایسنس of a conducive environment for all of the stakeholders. Those stakeholders include the government, include institutions, the board of directors, the management, the workers, the customers, the clients, the suppliers, the NGOs related to different aspects of the community and society at large, and also the community itself. Now, all of them put together tend to encompass and enclose what is corporate governance today. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the different definitions of corporate governance. We talked about its core definition. We talked about how the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development looks at corporate governance in various dimensions. And then we also talked about the Cadbury model. And we looked at how the Cadbury model defines corporate governance and how it tends to simplify corporate governance in its very essence. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go and look at another aspect, and that is the pillar of corporate governance, and it is called the McKinsey Report. In the McKinsey Reports, ladies and gentlemen, today, we will be looking at two distinct models. One will be the market-centric model, or the market model, and the other one would be the control-centric, or the control model related to corporate governance. We'll be looking at uh, what uh, it is interpreted as, and then we'll be looking at the different elements uh, in a four-dimensional diagram, which is very interesting in itself, ladies and gentlemen. So let's kick off the session and see what this McKinsey report model is all about, and what are the market and the, the control-centric models within this particular report. So ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about the McKinsey report model, then uh, like I was mentioning, it has the market model uh, where there is a governance chain which is efficient, well-developed, based upon equitable markets and has a dispersed ownership. Primarily what we see is, is that this is prevalent in the United States of America and Canada, in the United Kingdom, in major parts uh, of Europe and also in countries like uh, Australia. We see that basically this talks about how companies deal fairly with problems arising uh, from the issues of separation of ownership and effective control. This model tends to illustrate the conditions and the practices that are better understood and appreciated and as such highly valued by sophisticated global investors, whereby a global economy is being facilitated and created for the betterment of all. Now, when we tend to encapsulate it uh, within a four-dimensional framework, then we see that uh, based upon this pictorial representation, we see on one side is the corporate context. On the other side is the institutional context. There are four dimensions. The shareholder environment, the independence and performance environment, the transparency and accountability environment, and the capital uh, market liquidity. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at it uh, as an integrated model, where we overlap all of its ingredients and all of its elements, then we see that uh, one of the most important elements is a sophisticated institutional ownership. And that basically means that it is not uh, a one-man show. It is not a family business. Uh, it has dispersed ownership, whereby there are institutional investors, there are a multitude of shareholders and uh, there are independent boards uh, working over there. And that comes to the second dimension where we have non-executive majority boards and uh, aligned incentives for the top management. So again, everything is performance-based. We see that it has uh, non-executive majority uh, directors and also aligned incentives to ensure that people tend to perform and also get rewarded for whatever they are doing. On the third level, which is very important, 
is that there is a very high level of disclosure and there is shareholder equity. So, there is transparency and accountability based upon these two elements, which again is hinged upon an active equity market and also active takeover market. So, if there is anything wrong with the management, then some outsider uh, group can take over the market. And we have seen so many of those taking place. Uh, we have seen how large global corporations have been taken over and based upon that, their whole structure then uh, changed due to uh, the new management and the new board which had come uh, into practice. So again, we see that this model is more market driven, is lesser individual control, is more based upon the various stakeholders and again it creates a very conducive environment for institutions to flourish and grow and also it tends to increase the rewards and the equity and the profits for its different shareholders and stakeholders. The control model is a little bit different. In the control model what we see is that it is represented by underdeveloped equity markets, concentrated family ownership, less shareholder transparency and inadequate protection of minority and foreign shareholders. We see that this is prevalent in Asia and Latin America. In the Indian subcontinent, it is very prevalent. Also in the Middle East and also the Far East. In transitional and developing economies, there is a need to build, nurture and grow supporting such as a strong, efficient capital market regulator and judiciary to enforce contracts or protect property rights. So, the way to balance out this control model is to have an independent judiciary which upholds the rule of law and secondly, the various principles which are encapsulated in the different legal frameworks and laws of the land to ensure that there is an equal playing field. And then there is importance of having a good regulator, for example, in Pakistan, the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan, the State Bank of Pakistan, the Federal Bureau of Revenue and also FIA. So, all of these different institutions tend to regulate the corporate sector so that there is lesser exploitation and manipulation by those people who are controlling uh, the market and the various uh, corporate institutions within that particular economy and it can create a fair playing field for smaller investors and also for foreign investors. Looking at the same framework which we talked about uh, previously where there is a corporate context and institutional context, there is a shareholder environment dimension, there is an independence and performance dimension a transparency and accountability dimension and a capital market liquidity dimension. We see again that there are eight elements uh, within this particular model. Uh, there is concentrated ownership, reliance on family, bank and public finance, just like I was mentioning earlier. When we talk about independence and performance, there is more insider boards. Everyone is related to each one and then the uh, incentives are aligned with the core shareholders, not the stakeholders. We see that there is limited disclosure inadequate minority protection, which is some a negativity in all of this. And based upon that, limited market takeover and underdeveloped new issue markets because naturally it is controlled by a vested uh, closed door group and therefore it does not open up and control cannot be taken and shares cannot be taken. So, what we see is, is that this control model basically tends to uh, favor a limited few and only a few people tend to flourish and profit from the control model. While from the uh, market based model, we see that there is a greater disbursement of shareholding, there is more cross dimensional accountability and transparency, there is more merit and pragmatism incorporated into the whole system and then all of the shareholders and stakeholders get together to create a conducive environment for highly optimized productivity, performance, which is based upon efficient systems and mechanisms leading to higher profitability. So, that ladies and gentlemen is the McKinsey report. Thank you so much.